Hey, what's up everybody? Russ with RWGResearch.com here. Servo motors. So today, we're going to be working on finding a motor, getting it set up, and hopefully working for the directional coil winder tool end. So we want to be able to rotate the tool end where we want it to go at all points so that we can set this coil winder up and make it do fun things. Uh, we want to basically create a cam follower uh, that doesn't rely on the following of the cam. Instead, we're going to force it into the direction we want. So, this is similar to a drag knife, which is not a drag knife if it's motorized. And I'll throw up on the screen the two differences so you can see them. But, right now, I have to find a servo motor. So, I looked in my servo motor box. I dug out all the small ones. Those are the big ones. So I have a few selections that I have laying around in my box of goodies. And uh, yeah, the one that I found most useful um, is something on the order of this, but I need a really high torque hold and some small stepper motor such as that, which actually came out of a CD-ROM drive. You can find good ones there. Um, won't quite work. So the next option is something on the order of this. This also came out of a drive, except this was a floppy drive. This is a very old motor, but uh, a great little motor. It has very fine steps per revolution. Uh, you can feel it in there. It's really, really fine. Probably 1.8 or even smaller, potentially. Um, and then, you know, something like this has a good torque hold. But as you can see, my tool end versus my servo motor is like crazy. So I was, like I said, trying to find something smaller like this, so then I come across these guys, but these still don't have very much torque hold. And then I found this guy. So this guy, um, I'm gonna tell you the part number so you can look it up if you wish. It's an MP24Z. And this actually came out of an air conditioner like that. So if I turn this air conditioner on, watch what happens. You'll notice that these are motorized. See how they are turning? And these actually came out of an old air conditioner. These particular... Ooh, the wind is blowing. I don't need that right now. It's pretty good out here. So this stepper motor actually came out of an air conditioner just like that. They're the ones that are attached on the side. Those are actually the uh, plastic pieces. This one has a metal shaft. So, what we need to do is we need to characterize this. Okay, that is our goal. So, I've already done that on this bench, so let me get the uh, camera set up and explain to you the problem I'm having and how I'm resolving it. Alright, so before we get started here, jumping in, we need to figure out a little bit more information about this. This does say MP 24Z, but the rest of the label is pretty hard to read, and I think that's because there's some grease in here and it's uh, eaten into the label. It's wearing off. You can just rub the numbers off. Pretty bizarre. Anyway, I did find some data. This is what I could find online, and uh, according to this sheet, it's an MP24. However, uh, the 300 ohms resistance per winding seems to be accurate when I measure this with the uh, ohm meter. And it says here that it's uh, rated current per phase is 40 milliamps at 12 volt, which makes sense if you do the math that comes up to about exactly this. So, in order to find out um, more about this guy, I was able to find the data sheet, uh, exactly this one, it's MP24Z. So this data sheet tells us right here that uh, you have a couple different ways to use this. It says it's a unipolar or a bipolar and it's one to two phase excitation or two phase. So um, this appears to be pretty close to the one I got, but I have a, a Z on the end of mine, and some of these things aren't labeled very well in here. However, it does say that I could drive them unipolar or bipolar. So we're gonna talk about this a little bit more, and uh, down here at the bottom, well first, we know we want a, a bipolar, so we're gonna have to make sure we can do that, 
and I'll explain the difference here in a second. Let's uh, pull this thing apart and see what we got inside of it. Before I go pulling this thing apart, let's discuss a little bit more the difference between a unipolar and a bipolar. So a unipolar is set up like this. Um, sometimes these are individually connected, sometimes these are connected internally. In my case, I only have five leads. So mine seem to be a unipolar and it's connected like this. Um, we have a center tap wire here, both white, and they are connecting to positive voltage. And then we have each one of the edges connected to a driving MOSFET. And the MOSFET changes the winding here, the polarity and the winding, just by switching one of these on or off. And that allows you to, I believe, pick up more individual steps um, inside this thing. Now here's a unip or, or excuse me, that was a unipolar, here's a bipolar. So bipolar only has one coil, and these things are driven with an H-bridge. So in order to drive this little guy with a bipolar, um, I'm guessing that I am going to have to cut this tied connection right here, and I'm going to have to figure out how to wire this thing to get it to act like this. So mine is actually all internally connected, and you can see the pins down here, they're all connected. I only have five to play with, so we're going to have to take this thing apart and figure it out. But the difference between the unipolar and bipolar is that the bipolar is driven with the H-bridge here, and the unipolar is driven single directions with a coil set up like this with a common. So let's go ahead and take this thing apart and see what we got. So on this particular version, there's tabs on here. And I'm just going to try to pull those tabs open because I want to be able to put this back together. So let's see if I can grab those and bend them out without ruining everything. There we go. Got the tabs loose. Let's take it apart. Alright, got my hot pink background. Now I can see what I'm doing. So let's pull this thing apart. So this is what she looks like on the inside. We got the gears right on the top there. So I'll go ahead and try to pull this out without ruining everything. Uh, 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 uh. There we go. So here is a, uh, a top plate and you can see right here, it's hard to see, but those little tabs right there are actually part of the poles on this coil. So let's set that there. Here are the coils, and down in the bottom we have our little gear. We have a little uh, thing down there, and then also inside here, hard to see again, but you can see there's poles in here. That's actually part of the uh, pole pieces. So the other pole pieces are in the middle, and they're offset just a little as you can see there. Put that back in there before we lose it. So you can see the pole pieces are slightly offset. And then these two pole pieces are actually even offset from that. I think if I'm careful, I can pop this off. And then we can get to our co coils and get a better measurement, see what's going on in there. All right, so before I go too much further, I want to explain a little bit about what we're trying to do and what this coil is. So I got the coil out. We'll get a close-up of it here in a second. But it's basically configured like this right here. There are two coils on this top one, and there are two coils on this bottom one. And then the pins are like this, five through one. Now internally, when I measure the resistance of each one of these wires, if I measure from any pin from one to four, anywhere between these, I basically get 600 ohms anywhere I measure. However, here is my 300 ohms. So if I measure from 5 to any which point of these, I always get 300 ohms. That tells me 5 is probably the common here, and it's tied between each one of these uh, two coils that are the 600 ohms, make up 600 ohms. So here on this diagram, I have the unipolar version, and we basically have 300 ohms on a coil here, a center tap, 300 ohms on a coil here. So this is a total of 600 ohms. If I measure from 5 to any which one of these, I always get 300 ohms. But when I measure, let's say, from 4 to 2, I measure through this 300 ohms, and then through this 300 ohms, this is why I get 600 ohms. So the way this is set up is I actually need to be able to remove uh, this connection here. I need to take this off and isolate it 
um, so that we can connect it in a bipolar fashion because I cannot connect an H bridge across this, it won't work. So I'm thinking these come in different versions and you have to purchase them in the version you want. You can't actually connect this particular version to both. So what we got to do is I know that there are four coils in here and I know that they're center tapped but also upon that there are actually uh, two individual coils on each one of these separated from each other. So when we get done we're going to end up with eight wires and we're going to need to be able to connect these two and these two to make the bipolar connections. Now we have a couple options here. We can connect these in series or we can connect these in parallel. Now most printers use uh, 20 or 12 volt but now we're starting to use 24 volt and I happen to be using 24 volt. So this thing's rated at 12 volt 40 milliamps which happens to be 300 ohms. So that's a connection point between the positive and one of these to um, ground which the MOSFET is in between here. So that's why it's rated at 12 volt drops 400 milliamps. Now when I connect mine this way I have a choice. I could do series or I could do parallel. So series would be connecting these things like this so the center tap would just be one connection and you'd connect your motor driver between one and four here. The other way around is to connect three to one and to connect two to four and then you have um, 150 ohms. So in series you have 600 ohms and in parallel you have 50 ohms. Now the cool thing is I want to drive mine at 24 volts. So if I do the math, 24 volts dropped across 600 ohms is 40 milliamps still. And actually I could go up to 48 volts and still be safe because I'd still be dropping only 40 milliamps across 300 ohms. So actually I'm going to be dropping only 20 milliamps across each coil which is absolutely fine for what I want. If I need more power I'll figure that out. Um, if I connected them in, uh, that's if I connect them in series here. If I connected them in parallel I could run this on 6 volt, still achieve my 40 milliamps and probably not burn this guy up. So I actually go from a 12 volt to 24 or 6 volt. Now I could just remove one of these windings altogether and just connect one set and end up with uh, a 12 volt version if I'd like um, and not hurt anything. But I want to do 24 so I'm going to go ahead and connect these in a series fashion. So we need to figure out what's what on this guy. So let's have a closer look. Alrighty then. So hopefully you guys are not uh, confused right now and you understand what I'm about to attempt. So we got five wires sticking out of this thing. And if we look really close, we can actually see that there is one wire going to each one of these four pins. But the last one has quite a few wires going to it. Uh, you can see that from the top as well. There's more wires going to that. So this must be the common between all of the different coils. So we're going to need to desolder this here. And uh, also you can not see this very well, but right here there's a coil where they cross. There's actually two there, so that means there's two coils here and two coils here. So I will desolder that and uh, pull them apart and we'll see what we got. Okay, so I'm going to try my best to actually measure some of these and find out which one of these wires goes to what. I will just start with the first one, see if we can get any of these to read anything. Okay, so the first one seems to be the first one, it's 300 ohms. So the second one seems to be that wire right there. Yep. Okay, the second one's that one. The third one is going to be this one. Nope. The third one is that one, and that means the fourth one has to be this one. So there we go. So we've got one here, two there, three there, and four there. Now we're going to have to figure out which polarity they are. So to do that, we're going to grab the Gauss meter, and we're going to figure out which way is which. Now, we, before we uh, measure things with the Gauss meter, I wanted to look at this diagram one more time. So I have eight wires, which I do. We just check them. However, uh, we have to make sure these are connected correctly. 
okay? So if I connect this coil here with this coil here in series, they're not going to work. I have to connect this one here to this one here with series. Now I'm gonna show you a video right now of uh, what happens when you connect them wrongly and then you'll understand why they have to be correct. So check this out. So as you can see, we're stepping and I can control the speed, slow it down or speed it up. But I found a problem. If I try to force the motor to stop, it will stop and it will start turning in the other direction. So that tells me that the step direction is not going to work very well. So let me show you. If I turn it off, turn it back on, it just spun the wrong way. So now it's going counterclockwise. Turn it off, turn it back on counterclockwise, off on. Now it's going clockwise. The step direction in the driver is always the same direction. So that means the motor uh, is basically going in the direction that it starts and will probably not work very well this way. I need to be able to control the direction. All right, so as you can tell, we have to have these connected correctly or the direction of stepping doesn't work at all. Even though the steps still work, it doesn't work correctly. Okay, so I've checked these things and uh, it appears that this wire here is the first one and the second one here goes to one of these wires. The third one goes to this little wire. So I'm gonna connect this wire to this little wire. That'll be the first and the third pin. And then the second and the fourth pin are these two little wires. I'm gonna solder them together. So yeah, this will be fun. Let's see if we can get it done. Okay, those are hard to see, but I was able to get those soldered together. Now, the other thing that you need to be aware of is you could potentially solder these backwards. So even if you got the right coils, you could solder them backwards, the fields would cancel out, and then that would be bad news bear. So let me show you how to use the gauss meter to find out you've got the polarity correct. All right, so let me show you how we're going to use the gauss meter to figure out the uh, polarity is correct on these. So if they're wrong, I have to desolder one of the wires from the pins and hook it up to one of the free wires, which is not cool. So. Um, Here's what we've got. We want these coils to be facing the same direction. We want the field to be going the same way. We want them aiding. So if this coil produces a north here and a south here, we want this one to produce a north there and a south there. This will allow us to uh, create a common big field instead of a canceling field. If this one was south here and north here, then these two would be canceling and there would be uh, no flux at all when we'd connect it uh, between this point and this point versus this point and this point. So we're first gonna test this and then we're gonna test this. Now an interesting note is that here we've got so many turns, here's we've got so many turns, but they're equal. So it's kind of funny because when we measure this, um, here we're gonna measure one, it's gonna be somewhere around, uh, let's say 400, well actually it's four millitesla, okay, but if we measure both, one would think we'd have twice that. But because we have twice as much wire, we drop half as much current, and we end up with also four millitesla, which is kind of an interesting thing because of how this coil set up. So I've got the probe here, <clears throat> you can see. I'm just gonna set the probe underneath there. I'm gonna try to hold it down, and I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. So I'm gonna connect to the end of my wire there, and then I'm gonna do my best uh, to connect the other wire to the open end coil where we soldered it. All right, so there's four, about four millitesla in the positive direction. Now let's check pin three. We got about four millitesla in the positive direction. And if we checked current, we would notice that we had half the amount of current because we've got twice the amount of windings, we get the same amount of flux. Pretty interesting. So they're both positive when we tested it, so we know we have it in the right polarity. We can check the other one to make sure it's good, and now we can try to put this thing back together. So I'm putting a very small piece of heat shrink on here just to keep it from uh, causing us any issues. We don't want these wires touching on the inside. successfully we have uh, wired that up 
I will double check it with the uh, meter and make sure it's good. However, before we put the motor back together, I want to cut off this where the plug goes because I don't have the plug anymore. So I'm just going to cut this flush and then I'm going to actually just solder some wires to it and then we'll be good to go. Don't worry, I'm a professional. I can cut towards myself. I know exactly what I'm doing, which is why I have giant cuts on my hands. Ha! Ah, just kidding. So before we assemble it, let's go ahead and check and check and make sure we've got the uh, coils configured right. So between the first and the second, I should have nothing. Between the first and the third, I should have 600. And between the first and the fourth, I have nothing. The fifth is nothing now. Now between the second and third, I have nothing. And the second and fourth, I should have 600. So we've got that uh, correct and nothing between the last two. So now we can reassemble it. Alright, before we continue, I am going to temporarily, or actually permanently, solder the wires so that I can then test it before I crimp it back together. So we'll have to crimp it back together, but let's do some soldering first. All right, all heat shrinked up. We'll put some hot glue on there later once we get it crimped back together or something. Let's go ahead and connect it up to our controller and find out if it works. So the controller I'm going to be using is basically one of the chips off of a standard 3D printer. I believe this is a 4988 chip. One of these standard uh, stepper motor drivers. And I've got this little board. It's got a 555 timer on it. I can set the micro stepping, turn it on off. I can select how fast uh, I'm sending a pulse to the driver using the 55 timer, some capacitors, and this little switch. It's a pretty haggard board. It's the board actually I built for the uh, filament extruder. Um, I'm using something different on that now. So uh, let's go ahead and connect this up and see how it works. Okay, there we go. Looks like we have successfully wired this stepper motor to be a bipolar, bi, bipolar, bipolar motor. So now the question is: is if I try to stop it, does it continue the same way? Looks like the answer is yes. And the question is: is if I stop it using the switch, turn it back on, does it go the same way? Looks like the answer is yes. So now the next question is, is if we flip one of these phases, does it go the opposite way? So right now it is turning, turning counterclockwise. So let's uh, flip one of these wires, turn the power off, and see if it works. So basically we're gonna flip one of those two phases. And if we did it right, then it should turn clockwise. All right, let's power it back on, see if it turns clockwise. There we go, it's turning clockwise. So we have successfully done it. Now we need to crimp this thing back together because the top is what holds the whole thing together. Uh, yeah, we gotta do that right. All right, to get this back together, I'm gonna start by using the needle nose I used to get it apart. I'm going to try my best to just crimp these back together while holding it down. Then I'm going to have to go use an actual uh, little piece and stamp it best I can without hurting myself. Getting it back together is actually harder than getting it apart. Which doesn't seem like it would be, but it actually is. So, we'll leave it at that. Now let's go over and... Uh, do what we can with the uh, punch. When you need a third hand, you just find one. 
so this works out pretty well. Uh, I recommend always finding a third hand. Don't ask me where I got it. But uh, yes, it helps. Oh, there's a fourth hand. Now nah, I'm confused. Okay, let me see your injury. I don't really have one. Oh man, I almost broke my third hand. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and just hot glue these wires in the right place. And they will permanently stay there forever. Then I'll put a connector on the end of the wire somewhere else. This is just so that the wires don't break off. We do not want that to happen. All right, we made it. We have successfully turned this right here, which used to be a unipolar stepper motor, into a bipolar stepper motor. Successfully. So like I said, the reason I want to use this guy is because it's got a geared down version. It's small, compact. It doesn't move real fast, but I think I'm okay with that. I think it'll move fast enough for what I want to do. I just want a good torque hold. Now this does have a little bit of slop in the gears. It's a tiny bit, but it might be enough to be a concern. So we'll have to figure that out. Earlier I showed you a video where uh, the stepper motor was going in the opposite direction if I forced it. That's actually this one. So I've done two of these now. They both work great. I've tested them both at 24 volts. They both work great. So yeah, using some common knowledge and uh, now you guys know how to do this. We've successfully done it. This little stepper motor driver board I built a long time ago is a great little test tool. Now I can connect this up to my high-end 3D printing board without blowing it up. It does not have replaceable drivers, so I got to be careful. Um, the cool thing is I don't actually have to turn the limiting factor on the stepper motor driver because this thing will only pull 40 milliamps no matter what because it's 600 ohms so that could actually cause problems we'll have to see how that works but uh, yeah now we can design the uh, rest of the cam follower um, that will be a forced cam follower so instead of following it like this it'll be forced so all right thanks for watching god bless you guys read the bible more bye bye